Hello, we have been uh, discussing certain uh, interesting properties of uh, magnetic systems, for example, uh, where uh, the uh, spin of the uh, of the carriers are used to 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 transport information, uh, transfer information from uh, one point to the other, rather than using the uh, electrons themselves, the charge, <coughs> which costs a lot of Coulomb energy. And uh, of course, it also slows down the slows down the process. So the idea here is that you uh, you uh, uh, encode your information uh, with the magnetic state of the uh, of a system. So the one example we uh, uh, gave was this famous uh, giant magnetoresistive system, which is a uh, <coughs> which has earned actually a Nobel Prize. Uh, and uh, this system is uh, uh, like this that uh, uh, the magneto resistance, the resistance of the carriers uh, depend on the uh, spin state uh, of the material, uh, uh, so the spin alignment in the material. And uh, for example, in this case, for example, uh, remember this is not a case where uh, charge transport is completely quenched, it is still using charge transport but it uh, the charge transport depends on the spin of the uh, charge. So, uh, it is not fully uh, a spintronic device, but it is uh, a step towards a spintronic device. For example, here we, we said that you have a ferromagnetic material Two these red regions are ferromagnetic and this middle region is paramagnetic. And the uh, for example, if the two ferromagnets have opposite alignment, then uh, <coughs> this is a high resistance state because uh, a, a for example if you want to transfer an electron from the bottom to the top then uh, the up electron will uh, enter this uh, ferromagnetic region the all the electrons here are more or less carry up spin so you are transporting that into this region which is which contains down spins so then uh, the spin has to turn back into down uh, maybe the, the if the Fermi energies are not uh, compatible and if the uh, uh, such transports where the spin is in a different direction is not an easy transport. So, uh, once there is a, there could be scattering and uh, two there could be Fermi surface uh, mismatch Fermi level mismatches. So, <coughs> uh, primarily the spin scattering is uh, uh, is uh, uh, going to prevent it from uh, entering uh, this this region. Now that uh, on the other hand, suppose I now turn the spin on the top to up, then of course an electron can easily move into the uh, up region. So the uh, this kind of situation where you can magnetically control the transport uh, is called the magneto resistance because the resistance is high in this state in the right hand side and low in the left hand side and that can be used uh, to to read and write uh, uh, information to to send information for example here uh, the current is uh, uh, in one it, it, suppose there this uh, magnetic recording medium has this uh, moments ns sn and so on uh, and this uh, read write uh, this this kind of a gmr uh, read write head is moving uh, on it uh, then depending on uh, the uh, magnetized magnetic field that this produces uh, this will uh, change and uh, <coughs> so this will uh, either allow an electron to come in or uh, not allow uh, uh, the uh, an electron to go so the this for example the bottom uh, magnetic recording uh, head uh, has this uh, ns kind of uh, arrangement so where, where uh, magnetic states uh, are our data and uh, so that can be read off by this. Uh, uh, that will align this uh, this uh, uh, <coughs> regions, which is uh, uh, where there are there are magnetic the magnetic material. These are magnetic materials. So their spins are aligned and aligned, uh, and then depending on whether these two are parallel or perpendicular, uh, aligned or misaligned, uh, then current will flow or not. And that is how you can encode. Uh, data or information into a uh, this kind of a uh, magnetic arrangement. So, this is an example where magnetism is used to to transfer uh, 
uh, data to <coughs> record and transfer data. And then uh, this is one uh, Spintronic application that is already uh, in use, whereas this is uh, not what we actually want. Uh, we do not want to transport uh, any charge anywhere. Uh, and uh, so, that kind of spintron Spintronic applications uh, has not come uh, in the market yet and it is still in the, uh, in the drawing stage. Uh, theoretical analysis uh, goes on and uh, finally, one day uh, one should be able to uh, get such, uh, such a material where you do not need to transport electrons at all. Only spins get transported. Uh, spin state gets uh, carries the information and that state gets transported, uh, spin arrangement gets transported and that is how uh, this is uh, this is going to be done in the future. Uh, <coughs> the interesting thing about this is that all this requires you to understand the magnetic interaction between materials, between spins and uh, the moments that reside in a in an atom. Uh, <coughs> Uh, interact can interact with a nearby moment and that can lead to magnetic interaction. These are called exchange interactions and uh, that is what uh, we have to study to understand and uh, work on uh, magneto resistive materials and uh, use magnetism, how to use magnetism to, to do any applications. So, that is what I will go to and besides the point there is a fundamentally interesting uh, so, it is a fundamentally interesting subject, uh, it is actually one of the first uh, known macroscopic quantum state which I will uh, uh, come to. <coughs> so, let us uh, begin by discussing uh, something called uh, uh, <coughs> just an electron, take an electron uh, into a magnetic field which is travelling in a magnetic field. So, that is the subject of magnetism, uh, an electron in a magnetic field, basically that is uh, what one uh, wants to study and of course, uh, later on we will study uh, the interaction between uh, uh, moments in an electron where moments are not moving, but they are interacting with uh, each other via something called an exchange. So, first let us start with the usual magnetism that we have done. This is uh, uh, the <coughs> there are there are many ways you can study magnetism. One branch uh, studies magnetism starting from the magnetic materials. So, that is important those are materials magnetic materials are very important because the, those are the ones where applications uh, are uh, done with uh, the bulk applications of uh, magnetism. Whereas, there are uh, fundamental microscopic uh, uh, theories and this is what uh, I, I am going to concentrate on because to understand magnetism you have to basically understand how a magnet with its moment behaves uh, in presence of a magnetic field and then of course, how two such magnetic moments in a solid interact with each other uh, and produce so called long range order. Okay. So, that is that is the microscopic theory of magnetism. Whereas, the bulk magnetism which is where applications are uh, uh, done uh, involves the magnetic bulk magnetic properties and these properties are more or less uh, described by classical theory. Whereas, what I am going to do is uh, a quantum theory of magnetism. So, let us start with it. Uh, <coughs> so, there are certain definitions you need to know. One is the magnetization density. Uh, uh, in a volume uh, V uh, in an uniform field H uh, is uh, defined as uh, the uh, 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 at, at zero temperature uh, is uh, the ground state energy derivative with respect to H uh, divided by volume this is the density. So, divide by volume and with a minus sign. So, <coughs> that is the definition of magnetization uh, magnetization density. So, that is uh, one has to remember that one has to calculate it from any uh, description of microscopic magnetism. <coughs> now, how does one calculate it? Uh, though you calculate it uh, by at any finite temperature for example, you calculate it uh, from 
uh, not from the ground state energy because now you will have entropy uh, uh, corrections, entropy contributions to your energy. So, all that can be subsumed in this fact that if you know if you know your eigenstates of the Hamiltonian, then uh, the if the energy of these uh, states is r e sub n, then you have set of states uh, e sub n, uh, then of course, you can uh, uh, calculate the, mag the if you know the magnetization of each of these uh, states then just mag multiply that magnetization of each state by the probability uh, of ha having that state and sum over all the probabilities. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, you uh, get a form uh, which is uh, the in, in finite temperature of course, this uh, E ground state energy is then replaced by the free energy, okay? the Helmholtz free energy which is defined here as the sum of uh, this quantity. So, so that is the that is the standard definition at any finite temperature. So, all you have to do is to find out the free energy and then take a derivative with respect to magnetic to magnetic field and uh, divide by the volume with a minus sign and uh, you get the magnetization density. Susceptibility is a quantity that of course, we need and we uh, it, it, it is basically a response of the system to a magnetic field and uh, that uh, definition is how m changes with uh, field. So, this is just the derivative of del m del h. <coughs> so, that will become uh, two derivatives with respect to f uh, 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 with respect to h of the free energy. So, that is uh, just use the definition of m which was minus del f del h into 1 by v and that that uh, gives you the two second derivative with respect to magnetic field. So, first one has to start from atomic susceptibilities because after all susceptibility of an atom has to be calculated and then it has to be summed over uh, all atoms. Uh, if these atoms are not talking to each other in terms of magnetic interactions, then that will become the, the magnetic property of the system. That is the suppose I know the mag mag uh, magnetization or magnetic moment of an atom and if all the atoms uh, um, uh, are summed over their, their magnetic moments are summed over then we will get the magnetic moment of the uh, entire system yeah, that is how one does it. Now, to do that of course, you have to do a standard quantum mechanical calculation. So, I mean we can do classically also this can be this is there is nothing quantum mechanical here this is a standard canonical repl uh, replacement of uh, 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 momentum uh, as we have done in, in the case of uh, quantum Hall effect remember that p has to be replaced by e by c, p plus e by c into a a is the vector potential. So, uh, curl of a will give you h and uh, a is uh, the way one writes A is uh, choose a gauge which is minus half R cross H. Okay. So, that is for that is uh, use that to calculate your uh, A. <coughs> In this gauge, this is the the value the, the formula for A uh, and then of course, the celebrated relations that H equal to car A and divergence A is taken to be 0, it is often called Coulomb gauge. Uh, so, uh, this, uh, this choice actually you can easily see that this choice will uh, give you this. Okay. Uh, so, under this uh, and then uh, of course, P i which is the momentum at the of the uh, at the ith atom or uh, the electron at the ith atom is uh, of the ith electron it is sitting in ith atom probably and um, uh, so the ith electron momentum is uh, p uh, goes to p i plus this plus comes from the minus e otherwise it is p minus e a by c e at at the point i uh, uh, r sub i by c. So, it is the ith electron's momentum is now shifted by an amount which is 
uh, E by C into A of R i, so that is the canonical momentum. <coughs> so, the my kinetic energy is uh, T equal to sum over i P i square by twice m and uh, this is basically T i plus E a at R i by C uh, square by twice m that is the standard expression for uh, kinetic energy now in presence of a magnetic field. Okay. Uh, before I go further, uh, I have not introduced quantum mechanics or classical mechanics anything so far. Uh, this is still uh, I mean this can well be a classical uh, description, but let us just uh, ponder a bit and uh, go back to some, some beautiful ideas that uh, uh, came from uh, 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 Bohr and uh, his student uh, 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 Miss Van Luyen and they had a beautiful argument to show that you cannot have permanent magnetism uh, starting from classical mechanics. So, that is kind of interesting because that show that tells us that uh, whenever you look at a permanent magnet how big it is the underlying mechanism has to be quantum mechanical and that is why uh, I said in the beginning that this is the problem, the first known uh, and used macroscopic quantum object, uh, quantum uh, phenomenon that without knowing of course, because magnetism was discovered in uh, some 600 uh, BC and so, uh, the <coughs> this, uh, this relation actually tells us uh, that uh, this uh, assertion that this proof by uh, Bohr and uh, Van Leeuwen. Uh, tells us that you cannot have permanent magnet starting from classical mechanics. So, it has to be a quantum phenomenon. So, that makes the oldest it probably the oldest uh, quantum phenomenon at a macroscopic scale. Nowadays of course, superconductor you can uh, uh, see a, a superconductor right in front of your eyes at liquid nitrogen temperature. Uh, those are all uh, well known exotic quantum phenomena, but this is a quantum phenomenon that we use every day. Uh, <coughs> and for last uh, uh, 3000 years or so, 2500 years. <coughs> so, let me just explain what this picture uh, tells us. Uh, if you look at the, if you think still classically, uh, then uh, look at the these, uh, these electrons, all the electrons are rotating about a, uh, about the magnetic field. So, the magnetic field is out of the plane and the electrons are rotating about the uh, about that magnetic field. So, each electron forms an orbit and uh, then you can easily see and the classical way of looking at it is an orbiting uh, an uh, electron circulating in an orbit produces a magnetic moment proportional to its current uh, to the current that it generates. So, <coughs> but now let us look at these all the orbits that are inside these closed orbits. Uh, if you look at them, the orbits are they each of the suppose in two neighboring orbits are like this, and both rotating uh, the electrons in both rotating uh, along this direction. So, along this boundary, for example, this boundary you can see the motion of the, the left electron is up, whereas the motion of the right electron is down. So, they actually cancel these. Uh, contributions from these orbits at the boundary uh, which at the point where they are come close is uh, cancelling. So, then similarly another electron which is uh, here uh, it will cancel uh, the the, uh, uh, the moment coming from uh, this one. So, or the or orbits will get basically cancelled internally all internal orbits are cancelled which orbit remains. So, suppose I put another one here, the orbit that remains is the one which is the total current that will uh, be remaining still is the one which is uh, uh, coming from here. And it has a sense which is this, these are not out of these four, if you take this four then uh, this is the one that will uh, uh, remain. Okay. So, so, this will cancel this one, 
this will cancel this one and uh, the net current comes from this large orbit. Okay. So, that that is the uh, classical way of thinking of uh, a uh, magnetic large magnetic moment uh, forming out of uh, when you put a magnetic field. Now, uh, if you look at this picture on the left, uh, then you can see that. Uh, so, that means, in this, uh, this geometry in this uh, left hand side uh, uh, in this in this whole system uh, currents are moving only in this direction. There is a giant uh, loop and this is the net uh, movement of current due to the internal orbits, but then uh, you can see that there are these other orbits that are drawn at the boundary which is not a complete orbit. The, these orbits basically their orbits size of the orbit is such that they cannot complete they hit the boundary the electron hits the boundary and then reflects back. So, these are called skipping orbits. So, these skipping orbits which are at the boundary uh, are like this. Uh, so, they are like this and so on. Now, the each of them uh, represents a direction of rotation like this, but uh, since they are they cannot complete the orbit, uh, they have to reflect back the total sense of uh, the orbit is in uh, this direction. So, that orbit is in this direction. Now, you see that these two loops big loops they cancel each other. So, that is the that is one way to to sort of uh, warn you that it is possible that the mag total magnetization uh, may not survive. Okay. So, now, now let us do a mathematical theory to just uh, uh, show you that this is indeed the case uh, if you are thinking classically which is what we have just done. Now, look at this uh, this uh, object this is basically the partition function right uh, exponential uh, minus beta e uh, which is a function of uh, um, r i and the momentum of each of the electrons and then uh, and that that is basically the uh, Hamiltonian that we wrote the the uh, energy corresponding to that. So, so this integral uh, is uh, uh, giving us uh, this assumes that there is a continuous distribution of energy this is classical. So, there is a continuous distribution of energy and if you look at it the integrals are all from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, that is the that is the way we calculate partition function uh, right because in classical mechanics uh, momentum and position can take all uh, possible values continuously and we integrate over all of that to get the, um, uh, the classical uh, uh, partition function and then from partition function we can calculate the uh, free energy and for deriv two derivatives of free energy is uh, susceptibility one derivative will give you magnetization and so on with respect to field. Now, uh, since these integrals are from, from minus infinity to plus infinity and the only place where uh, 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 magnetic uh, field enters in this uh, in this uh, e to the power minus beta e r i p i. So, this sec this curly bracket means it is all of all sets of uh, entire set of r i s and p i s. Okay. So, uh, the only place it enters magnetic field enters is through p i. So, p i changes to p i uh, plus E A i A r i by C. Okay. Now, since this integral goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, it really does not matter if you add another term to P i, because you just shift the origin of your P i and uh, absorb this term and because it is a minus infinity to plus infinity integral, this integral will, be the, will remain the same. So, that means, the integral with A, the sector potential and without a, a uh, 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 they are the same 
and if they are the same that means the partition function has finally no dependence on h. So, if you now calculate the free energy which is log, log minus k b t log z. So, free energy is minus k b t log of z and um, this has no dependence on h and then if you take any derivative with respect to h uh, which is m which will give you 0 and uh, that is exactly what uh, uh, you do in classical mechanics. You find that the uh, magnetization vanishes then there is no question of magnetic moment susceptibility or anything for a classical system a system described by classical mechanics. So, this was uh, actually done by worked out by Bohr and uh, a student of him uh, Miss Van Leeuwen. The spelling is uh, a bit complicated uh, I hope I have done it correctly, but you can find it in uh, many textbooks uh, mentioned uh, this they mention this uh, this theorem and this is a very very easy uh, proof in that that there is almost no proof you just do one line and you get the answer and uh, it is surprising that uh, uh, it, it was overlooked by most people, but uh, nevertheless uh, the question then is how quantum mechanics restores uh, the after all in quantum mechanics also you will calculate the partition function and the, so the resolution of that is that in quantum mechanics you do not have uh, uh, continuous distribution of uh, momentum and energy and uh, therefore, uh, the, <coughs> the you have to sum over the eigenstates and then you of course, uh, so this integral will be replaced by sum and then it will be a completely different ball game and uh, that sum turns out to be non-zero and gives you a, uh, a magnetic moment. So, we will start uh, right from here uh, in our next class to start again from the previous slide which is uh, uh, the Hamiltonian that I have written down. So, uh, what I will do now is just to put this Hamiltonian I will just go straight to, to a quantum description and uh, uh, just uh, uh, up to this far is uh, nothing quantum, but after this I will start a uh, quantum. So, this is the new this is the Hamiltonian and this is what you get out of it all this I will work out and we will uh, continue from here.